Although it's set in stone that the outlaw Micah Bell was a huge factor in the downfall of the Vanderlyn gang, we can't deny the many mistakes and failures the gang had endured toward the final months of its near 20 year lifespan. However, what if I told you that the two most impactful deaths in the history of the gang that nearly solidified their fall in the new world could actually have been done at the hands of everyone's favorite housewife, Abigail Marston. There are plenty of moments that may have sparked the downward spiral of the gang. From the unseen Blackwater massacre at the very start, to the naive decision to intervene in an ancient family feud. Some players may also say that the killing of wealthy Italian businessman Angelo Bronte and oil tycoon Leviticus Cornwall was the official nail in the coffin for our beloved outlaws. Now I know, you're sitting there saying, you fool, all she does is yell at John. And you'd be right. I'm joking. Just use that tiny brain of yours, and whatever you think is right and proper, do the exact opposite. It's no secret that Abigail was not a fan of the gang's motivations, and there are multiple times during the game where she simply states her detaste for living life as an outlaw, and her longing for a safe, loving life for her son and her husband. But what if the desperate need to escape the life of the Vanderlyn gang and save her family ultimately ended in not only the deaths of one of the gang's founding and most loved members, but also the arrest and near hanging of her husband? To find the answer, we have to return to the final mission of Chapter 4, Banking the Old American Art. In order to fund their escape overseas and their retirement from the life of crime, the gang prepared for one last job robbing the Lemoyne National Bank in Saint Denis. It's the right plan. I know. The plan starts off with high hopes. Everybody is ready to leave this life of running from state to state, sleeping with one eye open, to hopefully find a peaceful place to start a new life. Throughout the six, seven playthroughs and roughly 572 hours, don't judge me, of playing this masterpiece, I can confirm without a shred of doubt that Abigail has had no major role in a single mission up until now. Up until this point, she has been hanging around in camp, giving Arthur some updates from other members, and basically doing nothing but looking out for Jack. If that is truly all she has been up to, you know, being the world's greatest mom and all, how did she manage to lose track of Jack when he got captured by the Braithwaites? Where is my son, Dutch Vandalin? Did she put her own son at risk on purpose just so she could manipulate John into caring more about his family? Perhaps she learned more from Hosea than we thought about conning and manipulating people. Let's break down and get a better understanding of the gang's game plan for this robbery, and at what point I think Abigail ratted on the Vanderlyn gang in order to secure her family's freedom. Now, to get a better picture of how this all fits into place, let's do a quick little recap of the turn of events that occurred during this robbery. Abigail and Hosea are meant to set off an explosion in order to divert the attention of the law blocks away from the gang's main objective, the Lemoyne National Bank. But as we all know, this isn't exactly how things turn out. While Arthur and Dutch are about to clean out the safes of the bank, gathering the money that they need, Agent Milton shows up at their front door with a gun to Hosea's back. After Milton shoots Hosea like a dog in the street, a huge gunfight ensues, trapping the gang inside the bank. Abigail is not seen during any of this. Shortly after, Arthur and Dutch blow a hole in the bank's wall to make an escape on the rooftops of Saint Denis. Lenny is then cut off and shot dead in front of Arthur. With the death of the gang's youngest member and along with Dutch's right hand man, the remaining fighters are stuck fleeing, accidentally ending up on a ship on its way to Guarma. Somehow during all this chaos, like I said, Abigail is not seen anywhere and she somehow manages to meet back up with the gang and go with them to their new hiding spot in La Caye. I have spent way too much time overanalyzing this game, and I have realized that some scenes in voice lines though, leave me questioning if maybe that's not exactly how things went. Now we're all familiar with the developers having plenty of voice lines and very minuscule details tucked away into the background of this massively detailed game world, but if you're familiar with the theory of who Jack Marston's father actually is, you'd know some of those lines are added in an attempt to deliberately throw players off 
and leave us with even more questions than answers. I found a spot to lie low for a while, then managed to get a ride with a wagon of workers heading out to the fields. Abigail said she somehow managed to slip away when they grabbed Hosea. You did good getting the others out of there. This line spoken by Charles Smith once the gang returns from Gorma is just too on the nose for that theory and I cannot ignore it. Now I can understand if a majority of you did ignore it and just summed it up to her making the escape from custody as I summed up earlier. But I think this was all a part of Agent Ross's plan to stay on the tail of the Vanderlyn gang. Think about this. Shortly before the Saint Denis robbery, the Vanderlyn gang carried through with an assault on Angelo Bronte's mansion. Located on the west side of the city, Angelo Bronte's close relation with the Saint Denis police force and the fact that Saint Denis is a popular city on the rise in the New World, it's safe to assume that it wasn't an event that slipped under the Pinkertons and the law's radar. So under the assumption that Milton and Ross were analyzing the patterns of the Vanderlyn gang, perhaps by having some sort of knowledge of the gang's plan to rob the bank, they could have easily set a trap for the gang to stumble into, especially knowing that they had begun to overreach their coverage, slowly becoming more and more reckless since the Blackwater Massacre. The day comes and both sides are preparing for the climatic event that would change things forever. But I believe the Pinkertons were watching the city, keeping an eye out for any members. While doing so, they managed to stop Hosea and Abigail before they can set off the decoy and make their escape. This explains Milton and Hosea's sudden arrival outside the bank. As most of you will notice, Agent Ross is mostly absent for this mission. Whereas pretty much every other time we see Milton show up, Ross is right there behind him. I believe this is because Milton left him in charge of Abigail and prevented her from either alerting the gang or getting involved, possibly worsening the situation. So finally, after all these years, I will confirm the truth behind the Pinkertons' discovery and intervention of the Vandalin gang's final robbery. It was a giant question throughout the gang really confirmed in everyone's mind that there was in fact a rat amongst them when Agent Milton showed up at the front door at the bank. So we are led to believe that somehow the Pinkertons caught up with at least Hosea at some point after the explosion. But what if he and Abigail were caught prior? Knowing Abigail's feelings towards the life of the gang and the life or death situation that they faced, she could have easily told the Pinkertons their plan begging and pleading for them to save John's life, as they were not fully aware of who he was and his near 20 year position amongst the gang. She gave up their plan, whether out of desperation or desire to speed up the exit of their current life, she inadvertently ended up causing nothing but trouble for the men at the bank and the other gang members. Milton and Ross would then set off this decoy explosion, knowing the gang would still be under the impression that the plan was still in play, and ensuring they would follow through with the robbery of the Lemoyne Bank. This can also be confirmed by her later capture by Agent Milton. He most likely would have been upset that she didn't hold up her end of the deal, causing the deaths of multiple Pinkertons and Saint Denis Law agents. So tell me, what do you think about this theory? Was Abigail secretly a rat all along, yearning for the love of her husband and wanting a normal life? Or do I just need to get a life and lay off the moonshine? Personally, I think it's a very plausible explanation for the Pinkertons' constant knowledge of the Vanderling Gang's movements, but let me know your thoughts down below. I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say about this. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like down below, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications for more theory videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.